So anyway. Anyway. We're uh, going to start the call. <laughs> the start, start the video with me talking about Ugandan children. Nope. <laughs> okay, the good. The video starts now. <laughs> okay. Hey, everybody. Here comes the welcome committee. Oh, look. Here uh, comes the welcome committee. Oh, Hong Kong. Yeah, but... Uh, uh, we love to see you smile. Oh. Uh, there for a second, I, like just until now, I didn't remember where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot where that came from. <laughs> it was a beautiful moment we all had shared, though. Come on. Did oh, Paolo, no. were you drunk? Here during comes the, the welcome committee. Mm. <laughs> you know I was. <laughs> anyway, I guess I should float like a giant turd in the punch bowl. I should float the topic of our discussion. Yeah, what are we talking about? Um, I think that the topic of this discussion, it phrased in one sentence, or, you know, that's not even proper language I'm using, but the changing face of the creepypasta community. You, you'd think uh, it already had changed its face many times because, you know, some people say, hey, Jeff the Killer is the face, and other people are like, no, it's Slenderman, and then people go, but Slenderman has no face, how does he count as the face? And then there's huge arguments everywhere, and... And that's why Maybe I'm getting off track. <laughs> <laughs> so the topic of today's episode, does Slenderman have a face? Is the absence of a face technically <laughs> a face? Don't be so facist, Slime Beast. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't want to bully or harass anybody, so... The I'm absence gonna, of a proof of say. a face does not mean the proof of... of there's something there. There's something there. I, I can't find it, though. <laughs> <laughs> what? Now who's being facist? Uh. But Are anyway, we all a little facist. I think we're all being a little facetious. Uh? Mm. Uh, <laughs> what are we actually talking about? <laughs> the cha uh, the changing face of the creepypasta community. The okay. fact that it started out, uh, you know, copy pasta, creepy pasta. Eventually, you know, got picked up and. I, I don't want to summarize the entire thing because then, you know, show over, but, uh... I will! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, got picked up by, let's say, you know, uh, narration, you know, spread to YouTube, uh, audience got bigger, you know, we've got movies and games, and, you know, it sort of is becoming something that's not kept in the bottle anymore, something that doesn't really belong where it originally was, and, you know, to the point of, I guess, recently with people... You know, multiple people, and, you know, people forget this about the videos I made. Multiple people trademarking the word. <laughs> right. and that's the, Including that's William Castle Productions. Terry Castle, right? Yeah. I mean, supposedly yeah. that's suspended. I don't, you know, I went to look it up, and it was, the site was just re returning, like, gibberish code. Uh-oh. Oh, you found normal porn for normal people. Yep. Okay. No. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and, uh, and add in this quip. For anybody who is completely unaware of it. Creepypasta, like, like Slime Beast said here, uh, does come from the term copypasta, except it's copypasta that's creepy. What is copypasta? Well, it's just text that is copied and pasted. Uh, on niche communities like 4chan and uh, Reddit and some other places, way, way back when this started, uh, they used to call copy and paste text Copy pasta, mm -hmm. and scary story formats of that became creepy pasta. So creepy copy pasta. Then when it started to bleed out into the mainstream, when it bled out onto YouTube and began to become its own thing, then it really turned into itself as creepy pasta. And not many people know the origin of the name, and understand how we came to get such a ridiculous name <laughs> <laughs> for a horror format. But that's that's where we are today, is that it started in very niche communities like 4chan and Reddit, uh, certain aspects of Reddit, developed onto YouTube and other websites, and now we're at this point now where Hollywood is uh, aware, they're looking, and they're speaking to the community. Mm -hmm. And to Speak all the people from 4chan who just heard Nick say it started on 4chan and Reddit, Direct your hate to Nick, not to this channel. <laughs> All the 4chan users. <laughs> um, Guys, you know that well, Reddit stole it from you. Come on. <laughs> that's a, that's the a thing, too, is it kind of evolved onto Reddit now. And then there was this new wave of uh, creepypasta that kind of came up in that Reddit era, I guess you would say, where um, 
you get 1,000 vultures and uh, pen pals and stuff like that. Mm. And that kind of and came no from no, sl- no sleep and everything, as opposed to the x board and all these other things. And if you don't know what a uh, copy pasta is, if you've ever seen Navy Marine copy pasta around of like, uh, what the fuck did you just say to me, you little bitch? I have you know I graduated top of my class at the new, like that's copy pasta, and so the old copy pastas used to be really short, like two paragraph things, and they would be pasted around pretty much verbatim, and now we're getting this evolution of it where they're expanding out and becoming more detailed, and we're getting all of these uh, little intricate details. It's now becoming much more like a blog format than in the past when we had what some people call micro pastas, where they were just really short to the point, had a real quick turn or a real quick twist to them. Right. Uh, so that that evolution has been nice. That's been interesting. There's still merit to the old stuff, but now we have this new stuff, and now we're having a whole lot of uh, these these problems over. The term, because the term is just in no way applicable anymore. I know right. that you're you're very connected to the term creepypasta. I know that you have a special place Me? in your heart for it. <laughs> well, at least you, I do. Are you referring to my hate for the term? <laughs> you have a, you have a very special place in your heart and or colon for the term creepypasta. The only reason he has a place in his colon is because he visited my my place beforehand and then ate it up, and then now it's just resting inside him, waiting for the next step of the process. Ooh, and that's how creepypasta is created. <laughs> when it comes out? <laughs> Are we like Chin Chan now? Oh, jeez. Like, I can't wait to poop that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, oh, I, was, God. I was about to say, well, before we go too far... Um, who are we to talk? I mean, like, who who are the welcome committee? I think that might be good to establish what our connection is for the uh, the egregiously unaware out there who don't know who we are and what we why we feel like we have a say. Or I mean, obviously we're just a bunch of fucking guys with opinions. Right. But we all feel very strongly about it's, to some degree the the wider expanse of creepypasta as a genre. So I mean, should we take a moment to like sort of introduce ourselves and talk about what we do as a yeah, committee. I mean, yeah, I think that if we went through and, you know, each said maybe, you know, why this topic is important to us, you know, in addition to, you know, as you say, introducing that, ourselves, et cetera. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. And then we can hit, and then and then we can hit various uh, beat points throughout the discussion um, once we have this sort of framework established. All right, how about you start us off then? Huh? Who, me? David, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. Fair enough. Just all right. doxed so, you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> he just doxed David him. now. <laughs> Midnight Marinera is a bi-monthly podcast. Oh, my God. It used to be. Written, produced, directed, and mixed by Stephen King. Hmm. But actually, yes. Uh, so I'm, I'm David. I, um, I um, run the Midnight Marinera channel. Uh, my whole introduction to Creepypasta was uh, mainly through the... I mean, initially through the... Um, I mean, I, I am a latecomer to the scene, all things considered. I've seen a lot of the older stuff. I really like a lot of the older stuff. But initially, it was just kind of reading stuff on creepypasta.com or on the Creepypasta wiki. Uh, and then by extension, going through to, um, you know, more the works of more specific <laughs> authors. Um, when, what I hit on was uh, the narration thing was kind of new at the time that I, or was really blowing up at the time that I came around um, you, the YouTube, and I was kind of looking at it and going, well, this is all well and good. And, you know, some people just want to kick back, and, and I'm not going to fault anyone for this. People just want to kick back and maybe listen to someone read a scary story while they play uh, either Kevin McLeod or Miyuji in the background, you know. Got to con- gotta contribute to that uh, adult illiteracy problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> it's... Uh... <laughs> Well, I mean, it, you know, it's it's a good thing to just kind of put on the background while, you know, you're doing something tedious. Or maybe you just like to hear a, a smooth, sonorous voice. Um, Mispronounced you know. commonly spoken words. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were fucking going to go there. This, I knew it. This oh is God. why I wanted Dead Palette here, because he makes me sound better by default. <laughs> he makes me sound more reasonable and nice. <laughs> I'll just go for the jugular. I don't care. Do it. 
but and I'm, I'm somewhere in the middle like guys please come on um mommy daddy no. don't fight no but my whole my whole thing is that i wanted to, to try and take it to another level because i've always been a fan even longer than um i mean i'm a fan of of horror and spooky genre usually a uh, horror fiction specifically and growing up, I listened to a lot of the old, old uh, radio serials, things like uh, Suspense, The Whistler, Alfred Hitchcock Presents, things like that. And um, I wanted, I've wanted for a long time to do uh, audio dramas and radio plays. So I had this crazy idea about, okay, why don't I just put the two together? Creepypasta is a scene of you know lots of different people writing lots of different things, and it's rife with uh, really Grammatic good fiction. Layers. <laughs> well, yes, that, but also... Ellipses? Somewhere in between it all, there is decent fiction that can be adapted into audio dramas with relative ease. And I thought, this would be really fun to do. It'd be different from a lot of the narration out there. Um, so that's how Midnight Marinera kind of came around. It was me trying to kind of play off of the idea of creepypasta because, like, everybody knows, it's a really dumb, really dumb name for what the genre, or it doesn't really represent what the genre is now. But I ran with it. I'm like, what's the fla extra flavor you can add to creepypasta, well, obviously the Midnight Marinera. Hmm. So I'm trying to make be legitimate with the stuff I do and actually make it, you know, intim intimidating, scary, eerie, you know, have it stick with you. But the intro and outro segments always have that kind of spooky, fun idea to them, which is why I do a terrible Peter Lorre caricature as the host for the show. <laughs> it's sort of my Crypt Keeper idea, so. Um, and you're, you're not going to mention that without doing the voice, so... Well, no, the problem is I can't do the voice anymore. I actually have to summon the voice in here. Oh, you, remember? pardon me. Sorry. I mean, I, I, could, I could do it. It would just take a bit. I mean, I uh, could have the pasta shade introduce himself. But he's fine. Busy. I'll work. Tell you what. Uh, uh, why don't you go next, Mr. Bisto? El Super Bisto. While I find the pasta shade, all right? Okay, sure. Uh, my name is Slime Beast, longtime horror fan, first time caller. Hi, Slime Beast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I've Hello, gone without Slime writing Beast. for three Why weeks. Why are you calling our show today, honey? Oh, God. <laughs> Welcome to Coffee Talk. Oh, God. Is it normal for my girlfriend to... No. Um, <laughs> not going down that road. No, but is, go with it. Is it normal for my girlfriend to not exist in any way? <laughs> <laughs> I am your pony you know wife. Can hear her? Mm. I don't even know what the fuck is going on anymore, but I am Sorry. Slime Beast, and I've been many other people, many other names, I guess, throughout the history of the interwebs. Uh, writer of comics, uh, writer and artist of games, you know, different uh, things in all different genres, any type of creative, you know, outlet I can find. And English dub of You're Under Arrest. English dub of You're Under Arrest. And <laughs> fucking hell. Every time I'll bring it up. You you I may recognize it. me as the voice of Thug Number One, but yeah, um, <laughs> you know I've been I've seen a lot of shit. I I have like that I have a mental thousand yard stare from uh, all of the places I've been where I've tried doing creative work and all sorts of corporate shit has come in. All sorts of bad opinions from people in charge have come in. All sorts of wonderful, wonderful things have been just shat on and ruined by people, even with the best intentions. You've got uh, creative PTSD, basically. Yeah. So I carry a bit of baggage with me into Creepypasta that, you know, and I knew of Creepypasta. It's one of those things where it's the same way with the SCP Foundation. Somebody linked me to an SCP article. You know, I looked at it said, oh, that's interesting, and moved on with life. You know, I knew what Creepypasta is. I've, you know, had read some of the stories. I had seen Jeff the Killer's picture. I, you know, all the hallmarks of getting started in Creepypasta. And, you know, as I said, just kind of said, that was interesting, moved on with life. And eventually found, you know, a sort of contest for Creepypasta. Wrote something for the contest and said, well, geez, now I can't fucking stop. So, <laughs> you know, I've just been writing, I guess, Creepypasta ever since that point. And now I have to go let a cat out of the room, and that's fucking ridiculous. I will be right back. Keep going without me. Uh, okay. Uh, I guess I'll go then. My name is Dead Palette. My real name is Brandon Patrick. 
Hi, um, Brandon. I'm an alcoholic. I'm I, treating this like a circle. <laughs> yes. Are we are we all sitting Indian style? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We're all here to help. I in 2013 I graduated from the Columbus College of Art and Design. I saw that the fine art world had a very terrible grasp of horror and there was so much potential there and I saw that creepypasta was the cutting edge of what horror could do. It, it was a very new and fresh form of horror where the internet had reinvigorated the stranger fiction aspects of um, old things like the Twilight Zone and, and that sort of horror where you have this mishmash of different ideas and all of these weird ideas are coming to the forefront. And some of them are very personal and uh, kind of go all over the place, put in all kinds of weird, seemingly meaningless details. And I really liked the form of art that came out of that. I really liked that kind of uh, new horror. And so that's where I got interested in it. From my senior thesis show where I wrote 21 short uh, sort of like a cross between the old microfiction and the newer stuff. I wrote 21 of those stories and then I just started narrating them on YouTube because I realized that if I just paste them anywhere, people are going to fucking read them and then take money from me. <laughs> <laughs> and then out of that evolved my desire to start making more things that are filmic. And that's what you're going to be seeing more recently. All right. Okie dokie. I think that's uh, everybody, so... Yeah, well, let's move on. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> hey, this is the real reason people want to come and see this is is uh, Mr. is the Golden Boy over here. Oh, no, no. No, um, come on. No, no, people are here to discuss the state of a community of horror fiction and its future and its past and, and quite certainly its present. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But considering... Uh, your your very unique stance on um, internet horror. Well, I'll let you I'll let you do that. I'll let you introduce yourself to the to the masses here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I am Nick Nocturne of the Nightmind Channel on YouTube. Hi, I Nick. Uh, <laughs> hello. I uh, I cover all sorts of horror and dark media, um, mystery, suspense, terror. You name it, I'm going to cover it. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. <laughs> what I have covered so far are the three major web series um, in, in uh, the Slenderverse, it's called. Marble Hornets, Everyman Hybrid, and Tribe 12. I've done a few other things um, that I've covered with web series online. And they all have a sort of horror or terror mystery element to them. That's uh, in the vein of what I do. But my link to uh, Creepypasta is, of course, through um, the main character of all three of those series I just mentioned, Slenderman, the hmm. first major icon of Creepypasta. So, Ooh, for in me... Incidentally... Oh, never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> well, well, incidentally, yeah. Uh, but but for me, uh, being, being someone who's into the horror scene, into the mystery scene, all of that good stuff, I love finding the grassroots uh, of where these things begin and where new creative endeavors start. And Creepypasta is really the place where that is happening. It's where people can just write something up and submit it. And there's a community around it that, that circulates, that reads it, that gets inspired off each other. They come up with great new ideas. And whenever there's a breeding bed for something like that, I love to find it and just try and blow it up and get it around there. So you basically you blow try it up to blow and up. get it around there. Yep. You try to blow up beds where people breed. <laughs> yeah. That was the impression I got. You've got yep, one shot. You to blow up beds where people breed. <laughs> okay, well, you, you can either, you know, sleep on the floor. I don't really have a blow-up bed, but I do have, like, five blow-up dolls. I could, like, lay them together, and that'd be some padding. Uh, oh, man. Put a blanket over them. You'll be rafting like Huck Finn, but yeah. Um, I will explain just because I don't know when this is gonna hit compared to the uh, the undercooked analysis episode. But uh, the we we've been, we've basically dubbed ourselves at this point the welcome committee 
thanks to a certain uh, creepypasta we all read and were basically in stitches laughing at because you, for all, you know, all the nice things we say over here, we all readily admit there is a lot of, uh, there's a lot of chaff you have to dig through if you're going to find the good stuff, such as the, uh, and uh, if you want to know the origin of, our, the true origin of our name, the Welcome Committee, uh, look for uh, Undercooked Analysis uh, take on Ronald McDonald House. <laughs> mm. Now I have to release this first so that the anticipation builds to yes, figure out. Yes, you do. Yeah. Yes, you and, do. Well, you have a you have a, you have a habit of getting these things out there faster than me. So, uh, I make I make my videos like Dead Palette makes the creepy pasta in his colon. So mm. <laughs> that's that's how I make videos. So. That explains the smell. <laughs> but um, I should say I just wanted to clarify one thing after we all have introduced ourselves. Uh, for anybody out there who is not sure what side of the fence they fall on and maybe is swayed sort of by, you know, sycophantic fandom, I will say that David has been kissed by Markiplier. <laughs> so true. maybe you should throw in with him as the person you uh, listen to. So. He, that, that, that bastard Markiplier, God bless him. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. He, anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's another story for another time, never mind. So I guess my thought Can, should on we do, what... Should we do the rest of this? In a old Jewish lady accent, all of us. Oh, oh you mean God. like this? The entire time. Yeah, the entire time. Dead palate. What have you been doing with your tuckus? <laughs> I, I don't think it's apropos to be talking about anybody's tuckus in here. Ah, uh, they they've heard worse. They've all take heard care, worse. Take my care my of your old own elderly Jewish woman smokes a lot, but yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I think this this is gonna die. Let's let it die and let's yeah. just move on, please. Let's let it die. Okay, it's dead. Anyway, <laughs> it was from the beginning. Yeah, it, this. Uh, <laughs> if you're watching this on YouTube, I have absolutely no standards left, and I uploaded it anyway. But um, yeah. <laughs> the I I guess what would we we would need to discuss, or maybe would want to discuss, would be. I mean, we've covered the fact that, you know, where Creepypasta started and how we got to the point where it reached YouTube. Yeah. And I guess I really, you know, and this is just, you know, this may be an incredibly bad idea, but I sort of want to discuss, like, the ramifications of stuff like that. And, you know, that's where you get into the dangerous territory of making... Mm -hmm statements about your belief of whether something has been good or bad for a fandom or a community right. where people are going to disagree and flame you in the comments but, so. uh, but that's the thing we're, we're not necessarily like the reason we're here is we're not necessarily here to debate we just want to we want to engage we we want to create dialogue that's right. that's the thing that's important here dialogue is important right because i mean you know it would be argued that the spreading of creepypasta to you know far and wide to anyone who will listen, you know, of course it's a good thing, but it brings with it, you know, the thorn, you know, the the things that maybe you don't see behind the scenes of, you know, people maybe getting, you know, you do have channels where, and this is, you know, pretty much true of anything where something is copied and pasted even. You do mm -hmm. get channels where, you know, there's no uh, reference to where the hell you got it. Right. You know, there's no reference to, if there is a reference to where you got it, there's, you know, just the least amount of trouble you could go to. You know, here's a link to the Creepypasta wiki. Goodbye. The barest you know, minimum. You don't even mention the author's name. Right. You don't, uh, you don't give the author credit. At the very least, you just go, you, you, at the, the very least, you slap up a link and go like, boom, I found this one day. It was lulz. Yeah, I mean, I guess my point would be, you know, it's a very good thing to get uh, something spread out far and wide, but there is a problem, I think, with the fact that it is the bare minimum of effort put in, you know, in various ways, probably on the majority of, uh, you know, narrations. I, You know, that would just be my personal opinion. And, you know, mm -hmm. I feel well, like, I'll, you know, I'll, it I'll... sort of doesn't represent the best face of Creepypasta to, you know, have somebody say, oh, here's a link to a Creepypasta video. And the, you know, video is, when I first went to work at such and such, you know, I did this, that, and the other thing. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, anyway. When I first went to work, oh, I already read that. <laughs> you know, anyway. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? I kind of feel like, you know, there's a certain... There's a certain almost level of respect that, you know, you certain, know, certain um, people don't give work. I don't know. You know, that just I'm might on, be I'm going to interject and mm-hmm. say it's not even really about respect. It's about understanding. Right. If you understand a piece of work and you are uh, reading it and you're doing it to make fun of it, that's one thing. If you're If you're <laughs> going out of your way to just read it and say, like, look how ridiculous this is. Um, you're you're really not getting that out of these people, and mm. going to be vague because I really don't care to go on a tirade about this person or that person. At the end of the day, you have to understand what it is that you're reading, whether you like it or dislike it. I've read things on my channel where there are aspects of them that I don't like, but I find the these other parts redeemable, and what mm-hmm. that is could be called just creepypasta narration. I did it as a fan because I understood the work and I cared about it. It wasn't about building up an ego for myself. I have my own work to do that. I don't need <laughs> the work of other people to build up my own ego. And that I think is, is where the problem comes in is these people build up these egos around themselves of this is <laughs> my YouTube channel where I do this and that. And it's like, yeah, you read other people's stories. You do literally <laughs> fucking nothing without no one is going to pay to listen to you read the phone as the old adage goes. They're not coming there for you. You've built up this name through Creepypasta many times, often using Creepypasta in your goddamn name, which is a little silly to me. Um, that <laughs> general that Creepypasta. It, you're you're building up that ego about yourself, and you're really trying to tacitly say, I'm hot shit because I read these fucking stories. You didn't <laughs> contribute the thing that people like. You are a incidental service to, you know, someone who wants to just mind, mindlessly listen to a story, who's trying to do something else and wants to listen and consume art at the same time. You are no better than a text-to-speech uh, format. <laughs> Worse in many cases because... That, that thing has a tendency to mess up <laughs> words in very specific circumstances. Not common fucking words. <laughs> that's Ouch. On the Ouch. <laughs> Dude, the, the salt is real here. <laughs> I like it. I think that the main thing I agree with, and, you know, I agree with all of that, but the main <laughs> thing I agree <laughs> is uh, I, I sort of came into this thinking uh, about the one, least amount one, of effort thing, being bro. put in. And thing, Dead Palette just corrected me, and I wholly understand now that it's actually understanding the work. Uh, real quick, though, <laughs> it's if you're doing it as a hobby, I have some people on my subscription list who are doing it as a hobby, who are doing it as a social thing, who are doing it as uh, sort of like an experiment, just like David did with how would this sound if it was like a ham radio thing. There, there are people who do it just because they love it, mm-hmm. that... And, and, you know, David is making money through Patreon. That's whatever. It's there are these other people who are just like, yeah, I'm doing this and maybe it'll be profitable in some way, somehow down the line. But they're, you, you can tell their intentions pretty early on if it's about building up an ego, if it's about building up this um, shrine to themselves, that'll come become apparent pretty soon. But if you've already drunk the Kool-Aid, it's really hard to get through to these fucking people. A lot of them have this tacit misunderstanding that these people who are narrating are somehow responsible for these fucking stories. Sorry, that's, you're not. Yeah, that's... It's just that's fucking from, weird. That's one of my big um, gripes I hear sometimes, and that's just people not putting in... Well, for one, people... That's That's the big crime of not being able to give the credit to the author that um, initially gave the story or being giving doing enough to credit the author saying like look this isn't me this is just me I'm just a mouthpiece for what is essentially a great fiction that I was inspired by enough to want to sit down and read to you all <laughs> to me that's the <laughs> or shitty fiction isn't this funny yeah and that's fine too because I mean look at I, I mean to, to cite uh, something we've all done before look at Undercooked Undercooked is us all sitting around and going, okay, is this is this 
objectively good fiction, bad fiction? Are we enjoying it regardless whether it's good or bad? Right. And I think the thing with Undercooked is that, you know, it has that element which is the understanding. Right. Uh, You know, we don't say, you know, let's look at Ronald McDonald House, and then we sit down and read the creepypasta and we say, you know, Ronald McDonald as a, you know, evil character? What kind of fucking idiot thinks of that? (laughs) You know, why would Ronald McDonald be evil? He's always good in the commercials. You know, like, (laughs) you know, we actually understand. That's the point, you know. It's an understanding of tropes. It's an understanding of genre. And it's a respect for uh, tropes and genre and going, okay, I'm willing to suspend disbelief so far as to go, okay, well, this here's here's a weird thing. Let's check it out, you know. And I think that um, what Dead Palette was saying about sort of the. And I'm going to use the word again, sycophantic nature of, you know, certain things is that I see I don't know if any of you have done like let's play type stuff in the past or no, just if you even watch you. let's play let's play videos but yeah, <laughs> yeah, sorry pretty much just you oh, okay uh, Nick had a very strong I'm sorry Nick I I'm, I'm trying to pull you back into the conversation <laughs> so quiet <laughs> it's it's but all right I know you once said to me Dave if I ever even consider the ideas of of doing a let's play anywhere on light mind, not light mind that's the light mind is your let's play channel that's if right. i ever decide i'm going to do light mind i want you to slap me and slap me hard <laughs> well no i believe my words were i want you to fly out to where i am hunt me down and shoot me in both knees <laughs> you want me to dude i i but ammunition is expensive can i can here's I just... the thing here's the thing i do love the existing let's players that i have Oh yeah. Uh, followed, and, and I understand how fun it can be, but when it comes to YouTube now, and taking the time to create something brand new and exciting that we've never seen before, versus continuously running a Let's Play channel among the hundreds of thousands to possible millions of Let's Play channels, my ideology is on the fence of let's do something brand new and inspiring. Right. Mm-hmm. When in, in in an entire state, <laughs> like a literal state of houses that are painted white, let's be the blue house. Right. That's that's my thought about it. Yeah. So I mean, if I ever turn I approach... into a white house, shoot me dead. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I so if Nick ever makes it to the White House, assassinate him. But yeah, um, oh my God. <laughs> the thing is, I you know I understand After what you're this, saying. I approach, unelectable. I approach the Let's Play thing sort of like if you've ever seen uh, back when Craig Ferguson was hosting the Late Late Show. Oh, Craig yeah, Ferguson, great. where he was yeah. like, "I'm just a you know I'm just a late night douchebag. I don't matter. Whatever you know that type of thing." I sort of I really took that to heart as like a way of producing you know certain content. You know, I'm just here. I'm a douchebag. Here's my story. Like it or don't. Bye. You know, um, I sort of bring that to the let's play type thing. You know, where I'm just like, I'm a YouTube douchebag. Hey, everybody, let's play a wacky game. Oh fuck. You know that type of thing. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you know, I see the parallels between let's play uh, hierarchy and behavior. You know, I see parallels with the creepypasta narration community. Oh, absolutely there are. You yeah. know, I see that thing where if I post a video of a certain game, I will get comments, multiple comments on the video saying, this is awesome, this is a great video, very funny, check out my channel. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so that's a lot of what you see with the creepypasta narration. You see, this is really great, you know, this is awesome, check out, you know, my channel. I'm, you know... uh Sergeant Major Creepypasta, you know, that's my name. You know, it's it sort of is that same type of thing that you see happening where, you know, the people who are going to video game, you know, videos and saying, this is funny, check out my channel, those are the people who are not going to make it very far. Because they're not spending the time trying to be interesting, trying to do anything different, trying to produce, you know, content, trying to think of what the next thing to do is. They're stuck in the old way of, you know, uh, this is, you know, before YouTube. They're stuck in the old way of, you know, going up to a celebrity and saying, I really love your work. By the way, here's my script, you know. I mean, <laughs> it's sort of like this old style of doing things. And, you know, I think that there are the people who rise to the top, you know, whether you hate or like their content, you know, 
uh, PewDiePie, Markiplier, you know, people like that. There are people who rise to the top of it because they can consistently uh, keep going and generate interest. And you've got, you know, people like Creeps McPasta and Mr. Creepypasta who can keep going and keep generating the videos and generate interest. And then you've got, you know, sort of, then you've got down the ladder, you know, the people who are, you know, doing well, people who are doing not so well, but you get that sort of cult of personality where if you ever go to, like, a stream with, like, Markiplier in it, you know, like a live stream, the chat is just going to be lit up with, you know, a scroll whizzing past, like, the fucking Roadrunner of everybody going, you know, notice me, notice me, notice me, notice me, check out my channel, I'd love to play with you sometime. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I see that parallel of, you know, people going into the whole ordeal, not with a love of playing games, not with an understanding of how games work, and not with an understanding of what's funny, you know, when you're playing a game, but with the purpose of making money and getting famous playing games. And I think Man. that you get that same thing with Creepypasta, where it's not the love of the Creepypasta. You know, people can enjoy it. You know, people can like to play a game. It doesn't necessarily mean they have the love, understanding, and dedication to play games for the rest of their foreseeable future, which is what you need to grow a channel to the size where you're making money. You know, I don't think that a lot of people have that love of creepypasta to eat, eat, live, and breathe and shit creepypasta, <laughs> you know, for the rest of their time that they're going to need to grow their channel to something, you know, where it's worthwhile. So, I don't know. That's just my, you know, vi viewing of the similarities between the two cultures, I guess. You know, going well, into it thinking, well, I'm going to start a YouTube channel and I'm going to get famous is not, you know, that's not the way to... <laughs> respect think, or understand the content you're producing. I think when you I, I, can, I can personally say that um, there there is a certain YouTube phenomenon of the boomtown. Uh, recently on Tumblr, I, uh, <laughs> I I posted something about um, because I do cover web series and I've started by covering major Slenderman web series. I made a post after discovering uh, the entire line of just how many Slender Man web series there are out there. Mm. And I got a little upset, and I did not choose my words carefully in, you know, portraying what my true intent for the post was. But in essence, I, I said outright to anybody who's thinking of creating a web series now, please do not Yo. use... I, I, <laughs> well, I did not see... I did not say please. I, I'm not going <laughs> to lie about that. I was way more passionate than that. I said, don't use slender man slender man is done <laughs> yeah and the reason for that was because i had actually looked around and i saw the boom town the boom town was all over the place and there was a slender man tent as far as the eye could see <laughs> and it, it was like i just i felt so perturbed on this it's like i had to say something and just tell people we need original content if if the web series is going to become an art form if it's, if it's going to become any bigger than Marvel Hornets brought it, then we need new blood. Right. And, and so from that aspect, looking at the web series stuff, the Boomtown effect is very real because it happened with Slender Series. There was a Slender Series boom. It started with Marvel Hornets, Everyman Hybrid, and Tribe 12, and then from there it rippled out, and now we have an entire city of them. I, you had know, I, think, I think it's even worse with this situation with creepypasta narrators and this kind of stuff because if you're trying to make something that's based around slender man there might th there's probably a good amount of you amount of your decision making skills that are going into how can i make this different and interesting but still slender man i don't think that it's less i think it's less opportunistic i think it's more Oh, Slender Man's really cool. I want to do something like that. Mm -hmm. I think there's more honest intentions there than there is in the whole YouTube thing. So well, there's def there definitely is. Yeah, there, there's more honest intentions, and and like some others brought up in um, discussing it after the post, there are definitely more routes that you can go with a web series covering Slender Man. It's just that I know personally, if you're out there and your heart is set on creating something and you really want to do something that succeeds and you want to start a creative professional living, 
You know, I don't want anybody steering themselves into the boom town and getting lost in it. Oh, right. That they've... sucks. That sucks to go into a place with this idea and, and on all of your energy and all of your effort and you get drowned out by a thousand similar voices when I know that the voice that is going to be heard is the most different one in the room. Mm. And that that was my that was my anger and my passion behind that because as soon as I saw the boomtown I'm like, "Oh my god, we can't afford any more settlers here because there are no more jobs." They've literally there ran jobs, out their their minimum wage at best. And I don't <laughs> want of, that to happen to people's dreams. And that's all the, the thing slender too. ore veins have gone dry. Yes. Uh, slender. The slender mine has gone bust. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's the thing too with um you know, you mentioned PewDiePie. I, I don't, I've never actually watched any of his videos. I don't care to. He doesn't seem interesting to me. It seems like he hit on something before other people did that was really a name that really uh, pulled people in. And I think he kind of got grandfathered into his position. And we have all of these other people who are jealous that they didn't get grandfathered into that position. And I think that that's the whole thing with Creepypasta too, is you have this person who has been grandfathered into this position, not out of skill, not out of love or dedication to the, to the genre, but he was the first person to do it, even if he did it really terribly. <laughs> and so he had all of this leeway to build up this channel and all of these sycophants. And so I think that's why he's in the position that he is in uh, Mr. Creepypasta. I don't think but, it's through. I was wondering if you were going to name him, but yeah. Well, well I'm, I, I, I'm not... I was thinking then, here comes the connection to the narration community. In three, yeah. two... I'm, <laughs> I'm not the kind of pussy to say like, oh, people in the community have been blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, I'm going to say the motherfucker's name. It's, come on, it, I'm not... That's just ridiculous. Yeah, I wish that, and I'll just, you know, digress a little bit, and then I'll shut Go up. Go for but, it. Uh, I, I wish I that on the internet in general, we could disagree about things or say what we think about somebody without this immediate thing of you fucking hate somebody and you want to rip their eyes out. Right. I don't know if Dead Palette wants to rip out Mr. Creepypasta's eyes. No, um, we're just annoyed with him. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You know, I would assume that the two of them could have an actual conversation you know, there's this like thing on the internet where it's just immediately it's like the block culture. You know, you disagree with me, blocked. You know, you disagree with this person or how they do things. You know, you're you hate them and you're garbage and you're trying to bully and harass and kill them. You know, you are the scum of the earth. You <sighs> shouldn't exist. You fucking waste of human space. You know that whole that whole mentality. Mm, Everything's make going a joke extreme. and you have an agenda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God. God, make that, art. You definitely that is the have an agenda. Fucking truth. You make oh. a joke. You have an agenda. Hmm. Truer words have never been spoken. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't hate him. I think that I can say a bunch of terrible things about him. Right. I think he's a coward. Mm. I think he is uh, very full of himself. I think he's very foolish. I don't think he's respectful, and I don't think he understands thing one about creepypasta. I don't think he's a bad person. I think he's an idiot. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Now, that being said, I wanted to raise a point here, too, um, because we, we had already kind of talked about, you know, obviously the, the, the readability of certain stories and certain stories have been read over and over again. Uh, and people want to read, you know, stuff. And to me, the difference between people who, um, you know, are just in it because it's the trendy thing to do and the people who want to read it because they generally offer stuff is it, it comes back to understanding and respecting the work. And to me, the, the, the few... Um, like uh, the few reader types that I actually listen to and enjoy are the ones who I can tell are people who, and they're usually smaller like channels, but mm -hmm. they're the people who I can tell have picked up and read a story because they like the story, because they enjoy the story and they want to share it. Um, I, I have a, uh, I mean, when it, when it, building off the Mr. Creepypasta thing, sometimes I wonder if when he got his start, because um, I don't know that much about the guy, when he got his start, if he was reading stories that he saw that he enjoyed, I don't know. It's possible. I'm sure he did. And the thing is, now it's just because of what he does. And look, I'm the kind of person who's willing to give a lot of people the benefit of the doubt. But And I'm not saying this this forgives any or differs from anyone else's opinion or whatever. And it probably does. But 
it could be that thing where it's like, well, you know what? He's not doing it because he loves doing it anymore. It's a business. It's a thing that he's doing. And regardless how shady that business is, he's just kind of just flatly reading stories at this point. They're hmm. probably not fiction he actually enjoys. And I know this because I feel like I've heard the few times. Because he couldn't possibly Mr. enjoy your story. Oh, jeez. Oh, wow. wow. You know what? Fuck you. <laughs> Here's the no no here's but here's the thing I've listened to a few of his works including the one of mine that he actually read and the difference being there's like the stories that he actually seems to like you can kind of tell he actually likes them because he puts marginally more effort into being like oh and here's the person who wrote this and here's where you can find it and also here's like you can see like there's there's a different tone to the narration of the story there's a different I, sort of I aspect think there's I think there's a degree of dick sucking there, though. I have I I you, my question kind you? of goes a little bit with that. The ones where you heard that he went out of his way to plug somebody was that Vincent Vinicava? Because <laughs> okay, it was one hundred percent of the time. Okay, well, good point. Hmm. How dare you? <laughs> By the way, I I should have mentioned this earlier. I did invite uh, Vincent to join the call, you know, way earlier, you know, like yeah. uh, more than enough time to, and I did invite through uh, different messages on different services. I did invite uh, various people who have given us shit and are, you know, sort of on the other, you know, I'm sorry, side of the I'm, fence. And, I'm sorry, you know, us? Absolutely none of them have gotten back to me. So. <laughs> you used the word us. I'm, hold on a second there, Buster. <laughs> oh. 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 Ah. Fine. Well, I mean, I was referring to Dead Palette myself, but okay. Really? Yeah, really, at the end of the day. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's really you guys. Yeah. I mean, come on, me the and, ones me who are going to stick our necks out to be dicks. Yeah, me and Nick are, are cinnamon rolls. True. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just don't want you know I don't want there to be that assumption from anybody who may still be listening at this point and hasn't tuned out that you know this is like let's get together and have our echo chamber. You know, it's that thing no. of it goes back to what I said about with Dead Palette. You know, where on the internet, the minute you say something, you know, immediately you must hate that person. You know. I have not gotten, I very rarely ever get any response from anybody, you know, when I try to talk to somebody in private. You know, mm. people always do that thing where they're like, you should have contacted this person in private. Well, yeah, I who, do who that and they don't respond. <laughs> who recently did that to you? Uh, who recently didn't respond to me? Who said uh, in public, oh, you could have contacted me and then public and in, in public and then privately. It's like, well, I did. <sighs> You, I, I should have realized immediately that you were leading me, but yeah. I yeah. knew this was going to um, come up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with uh, Vincent Cava, who I did invite, as I said, I invited to the call. Uh, and different supporters of his position, you know, invited them to the call. You know, no response, of course, but... And here's the thing, too. Someone in his... In, uh, I think it was your comments. I'm not sure. I think Yeah, I think it was your comments, not the comments on his video. Someone said, if he was just like, yeah, I'm doing it for selfish reasons really i'd have no problem with him it's like well that was honest oh whatever that's true <laughs> that is honest <laughs> it was just like the fact that you're doubling down and really trying to defend this position as you're this angel trying to save creepypasta is just absurd it doesn't yeah. make well, any the, goddamn the, sense the one piercing arrow i i am I, I have a sort of I, I am kind of the outsider in this entire conversation. I my connection to creepypasta as it stands right now with everything that I've done is uh light at best and I will admit that. But being a purveyor of the uh, of the community, of the stories and just being a watcher on the outside as it is, I would be fully willing to accept what Vincent Kava said if and only if he could answer this yes or no question. Oh, yeah. Would he go ahead and allow other original creators, other original uh, writers to release their own self-made work under a title that involves the word creepypasta without hitting them with a lawsuit? If he is here to protect the name from those who will defile it and defile other artists' work, then he has to obey that condition. If the answer is no, that he would still enforce a trademark if Slime Beast here were to release Slime Beast's Creepypasta collection with all of his original written work, 
if Vince and Kamba came after him and said, you can't do that, you have the word creepypasta in the name, even though he claims to be protecting the term, then we know that he is not merely doing this to play the Guardian. Hmm. It has to be all or nothing. If it stands that way for him, it must stand that way for every single person who is putting out a collection of their own original work with creepypasta in the title just like him. Otherwise, this was a monopoly move. You know, that's the thing, too, is take, for example, Metal Gear. I love Metal Gear. Fucking love it. (laughs) Fucking, of course, I of knew course. you were going to fucking talk about Metal Gear <laughs> right. at some point. Right. Um, I would not be comfortable with Hideo Kojima or whomever, Konami especially, uh, trademarking the word stealth, like in, in regards to a video game. Well, see, I, lo- I, I, I love feel, that guy. Oh, God. Sorry. I would not trust him for that. Uh, he's a human. He's going to make mistakes. If you're saying that you trust an author to... Or, or whomever, to copyright a, a really common term like creepypasta, you're being silly, and your trust is way, way too easily earned. I don't, I, you don't know this person. You might think you know this person, but you don't know this person. You can take someone like Stephen King. Sure, by all accounts, he's a fine guy, but there's every he's opportunity. In, <laughs> yeah, there's every opportunity in the world that he could just secretly be a giant asshole who's trying to prevent other authors. You just don't fucking know. And for you to say, well, I like his work, so I'm going to defend him is silly. And he knows that. And I think it's kind of lame that he's trying to use his fans to defend him and say, like, well, I like him. So, well, I want to defend him no matter what. Well, see, the thing is, I want to get two points out here. One is that when you look at and, you know, I notice these things, people think I look into stuff too much and dig too hard. How dare you care? Yeah, but the thing is, it's readily apparent if you just look. And when I look at the video that was put out explaining the trademark, pretty much, and this is not 100%, but pretty much all of the supportive comments are from people with semi-medium YouTube channels reading Creepypasta. These are people who want to get in good with Mr. Creepypasta and you know, different things like that, maybe already are in good with them and our friends. You know, it's that thing of, I don't even necessarily know, because you look at the creepy, you look at the creepypasta, you look at the comments and you see, this couldn't be in better hands than yours. (laughs) You know, and these, you know, comments Uh, like that, and you look at it and nine out of ten of these comments are coming from, you know, creepy senior pasta. And you click the channel and it's, you know, 15,000 subscribers you know, reading creepypasta and things like that. And, you know, that's, of course, you're going to get... And this is, you know, this is more of a negative for Vincent than for anyone. Uh, The thing is, his support comes at a price with a string attached. You know, the support he gets is from the people who would comment on a Let's Play video saying, this video was funny, you're hilarious, you're the best YouTuber I've ever seen. Also, here is my channel. You know, please, yeah. you know, work with me or subscribe to me. Also, if I, you're down, if you're downvoting this video, congratulations. I, I hope you feel good about yourself. Because <laughs> I, because you need that downvote a lot more than we need the, the not to go without the slings and arrows of you downvoting this video. <laughs> <laughs> I love when I, you release like an hour long video. And there's a there's like four downvotes within five minutes of uploading it. Oh, You're like, you didn't fucking watch it. Yeah, well, I, I really side note. I had a weird experience where I uploaded a video called um, "Free Wi-Fi Apartments." Yeah, I actually watched that. Yeah, <laughs> for once. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's like 25 minutes long, and like I I don't know how this happens. I upload it like six minutes later. Someone was like, "Whoa, that ending was crazy," and I'm like. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> there was like all kinds of like weird sexual stuff that you just skipped out on. How did you you're missing all the good parts, man? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I'm like, gee, I, I think I'll listen to this one. You know, I haven't heard. I've heard some of your videos. I, you know, admittedly, because I'm just going to be honest. There's and, a, well, you know, there's I watched ton, this one. and so. I'm like, I'm going to watch this one. You know, I'm going to sit back and relax and watch this one. And there's Dead Palette saying. You know, I fingered myself, and I'm like, oh, hey, okay, <laughs> awesome. 
<laughs> this is the one I chose, but I wanted to do uh You, you know, have quickly... chosen Say what? Wisely. You have chosen wisely. Yes. <laughs> But um, Sorry, I wanted to ahead. circle back to what Nick said before, and I wanted to essentially translate his high-minded comments more down to my level, because I know some people are going to have a little bit of trouble keeping would, to what he actually said. I would, as, I would also like a chance to address the elephant in the room at some point. Okay. Being the whole, the whole creepypasta trademark thing. Right. But we'll get back to that. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say that, you know, what Nick said is true, and I, you know, I know that there are going to be some people who either, you know, well, through whatever their impairment will, you know, not get some of that. The thing is, you know, there is no problem with people releasing creepypasta. You know, there is no problem and there can be no problem with people releasing their stories. What Nick is talking about and what I'm talking about, and I think what we're all talking about, is it would be nice if Vincent could come out with a statement as to whether he would care if people use creepypasta in the title of what they're producing. Uh, yeah, I yes. think that's but, the... But if, I could, if I could sum it up in one statement, it's that if Vincent Vinicava will not allow other authors to publish their own original work under their own name using the term creepypasta in the title without threat of being sued by him, then he is lying about right. his guardian position. If he can't give the same authority to Slime Beast that he's going to be using for his own work, using this guardian position, then he's not being a guardian. He trademarked it to own the name so that he alone could wield authority over it. For those of you uh, who are following, hoping for Everyman hybrid Easter eggs, uh, yes, uh, Nick has just confirmed that Vincent V. Kava is playing the Guardian in Habit's play. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh. um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, it doesn't even have to be me, you know, or, you know, because I know, as I said, I have to sort of translate for the stupid people. Um, <laughs> the thing is, you know, it doesn't have to be me if someone who has completely not even heard about any of anything that's been going on, you know, Joe Bob Jr. the third writes his, his book of short stories and puts out on Amazon his book and just calls it creepypasta. And then below that, you know, the stories of Billy Joe Bob Jr. the third, you know, the, the question is, would that be allowed to stay or, would the trademark be enforced against Billy Bob, Joe Bob Jr. the third, or whatever I called him, you know, and having Amazon remove the t book because of the title, saying creepypasta. You know, it, it, it's not even just, it's not for me, it's not personal for me, I don't plan to release a book, ever. You know, it's that thing of, you know, and this is something, Nick actually suggested this, and I'm glad he did, because now we can call back to it. He said that I should tweet at Vincent Cava, you know, asking him if he can swear that he won't enforce the trademark on anyone who isn't plagiarizing or doing something wrong. You know, doing something wrong in that to that extent. And get, as usual, no response. This has been like 24 hours, you know. Granted, 24 hours isn't a lot in certain, cer certain circumstances, but, you know, he has the time to do all the other stuff explaining everything, but, you know, can't or won't or, you know, hasn't come out to say... Yes, anybody can use creepypasta in their title. I will never well, enforce slow, it. Slow, slow down, slow down. I mean, it takes some some time to get to around to things. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's he's had the the trademark for a year and he hasn't gone after those plagiarists, so it's going to take a while for him to get back to you. Slime. That's piece. true. That's true. I think that's um... that, that's the only that's the only thing that that really has me believing that this could be the case. It's just that. Without that yes or no of whether or not he would allow Billy Joe Bob to write <laughs> his own published original work with the word creepypasta in the title and not go after him legally and say, you can't use that, that's my trademark. If he can't do that, then we know that his position is not as pure as he's claiming. Well, exactly. I think we, we already know that there's something shady going on. <laughs> what? We don't know exactly. We don't right. know exactly what his intentions are. That, why and didn't he I, tell I, people I, that he was doing this for this exact reason that's when what he I was took the to. trademark? Yeah, yeah, that, that actually leads me to the, the point I was going to make, because 
uh, for people who are listening who might be, you know, who are op- listening and trying to be open minded here, look. I want to point out from my perspective, I have nothing against Vincent Vincent Cava, and I'm willing to give some benefit of the That's, doubt here. But you yeah, gotta that makes four of us. Yeah, that, <laughs> may, that makes four of us. Is that right. there, there's <clears throat> like, like I said, I have such a tenuous connection to Creepy Pasta that there's there's nobody <laughs> that I right. can either hate or love or favor in any form. It's just that this is the way that I'm seeing things, and from the from the standing point that I have. I have to call it like it is. Right. And you got to understand, too, what people got to understand is that the reason we are all suspicious about this is because he has had this, as, as people who aren't, who don't have any particular opinion of this gentleman, uh, we just know here, here's the name of someone who has this exposition in um, the creepypasta sort of community, if you want to call it that, who now owns this trademark and has owned it for a while. And hasn't right. said anything about it until recently, when uh, a combination of this fallout from the Fine Brothers and uh, a little bit of now and ma- and keep in mind the information about the cop the the trademark was all public information. You just had to do entirely some entirely private. <laughs> Get out! Get out now! Uh. No, it was uh, and and I you know I was sitting in for a lot of the like I was you know as as you know that we were trying to find out okay so who owns the trademark and of course we we learned that I mean it's not just Vincent Cava who has a a, a trade a registered trademark for the term creepy pasta in a certain medium they also got as was mentioned a little earlier Terry Castle of right. William Castle Productions now and that's that in that end that's covering more of the like TV and movie spectrum that's actually but, what could affect YouTube that is actually that's, what could yeah. affect YouTube. And yeah, the thing is, I think to that, be completely oh, disgusted at it would be it would be William Castle, that entire production company. Because from what we can see right now, what I read, they are looking to use to trademark the name in any media format, broadcast over the internet or otherwise. Right. And that's not something that we can just let happen here. That's yeah, not we, can't that we can't fall let back on the expect- down. Oh. We can't fall back on the explanation that uh, that Vincent, Vincent trademarked it to prevent that because you know now he this is stated a that, that he didn't know they were doing that. So community suddenly owning this trademark, and it's like, what are you doing? Right. What are you planning? It's sort of the difference between like you and your friends. Let's say this group of four people right here. In this yes. call, we invent we're something friends. together. <laughs> and, you know, we come up with an entirely new genre of art, okay? Let's call it's... it... I don't know. No, no, forget it. Let's call it... <laughs> Butt Ash. nuggets. Um, yeah, oh my god, we've done this gag so much already <laughs> in the comment sections. But I'm just saying, you know... I like uh, Dire Doritos. Yeah, the different We're going names. to go with Dire Doritos. There uh, we go. Dire, dire Doritos. Doritos. Okay, I yeah. like it. That one was great. But let's say the four <laughs> of us come up with something. And we invent a new genre of entertainment. It's different for a soulless corporation with some harpy, you know, trying to pluck, you know, things for her own, you know, benefit. It's different for a soulless corporation to s- sweep in and steal it from us versus one of the four people in this call secretly trademarking it without telling the other three. Oh you know, my that's god! That's an entirely it's a different thing. It's a fuck. If that were the case, it'd be a fucking tontine scheme. That would be awesome. <laughs> tontine. <laughs> but I mean, that's you the thing, you know. Look it up, kids. It's awesome. For anybody, you may have seen the Simpsons episode, but um, for anyone out there who, you know, may still be listening to this, you know, picture someone you don't know anything about and haven't been a fan of, you know, doing exactly the same thing. You know, does it still? ring true to you, you know, everything that's going on? Is it still somebody that you would pr- place implicit trust in, you know, not knowing them? I mean, you would, I would have difficulty believing you could, <laughs> you know, say it's in such good hands with you if, you know, it turned out to be some random, you know, creepypasta narrator that you had never heard of or, you know, a writer you had never heard of, et cetera, and so forth. You know, this is somebody that we haven't heard of or, you know, I shouldn't say haven't heard of. Tac- is, maybe only tacitly have heard of. Yeah, you know? this like, is somebody we don't really know. And to have, you know, people say, I'm a fan of his, and, you know, trust me, it's all good. 
you know that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't do much for us. <laughs> yeah. This, again, I wanna I wanna stress this. We have nothing against Vincent Cava. We right. are just sus- we are just suspicious and protective of the genre, and we want to make sure that it, whoever is gonna trademark again and, and and for one and for another thing i mean he can he can make that argument about oh i do this to protect it because i see this trend of tr- common words being trademarked but this is a genre and also that that trend is still a relatively new one and again this was this was a while ago this was almost a year ago or right. at least a year ago and what honestly still bothers me is the fact that he did that and then didn't say anything until now when it seems like his hand was forced exactly you know? so- it's also like the reason the Fine Brothers backed down was because of two things. It wasn't just the view count, uh, the subscriber count dropping. It was also legal pressure. There was a lawyer or multiple lawyers on Reddit who organized and said, we can contest this thing. And that's like the next day. That's when they backed down. Mm. Um, if you really want to put the screws to somebody who's trying to trademark creepypasta, that's how you would do it is by saying, look at this asshole. And, <laughs> and clearly these people have the bully pulpit to do just that, to get together and say, hey, Mr. Creepypasta, have you seen this asshole who's trying to copyright Creepypasta? Can you make a video about it? Can you email all your friends as you're clearly doing right now? Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, you have that connection to do that and you have that bully pulpit to do that. If you were trying to prevent plagiarism uh if you were trying to uh, prevent someone from trademarking this when you don't own it then the way you do that isn't by trademarking it yourself that's just silly (laughs) you you don't own it it's like well i gotta copyright that i gotta trademark this because someone else might try and trademark it who doesn't own it (laughs) it's like well you don't own it either somebody's gonna steal this loaf of bread i better take it um, yeah. <laughs> the thing is, you know, I, and this is speaking personally, and we're in a casual conversation here. Exactly. Um, speaking personally, the involvement of Mr. Creepypasta, to me, solidifies a certain element of sketchiness. Yeah. You know, just based on my own personal experiences. And I know someone I who... And I don't think Mr. Creepypasta understands that he's sketchy. Right. But he totally is. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing. I, and this is part of what I say about me bringing the baggage from the comic industry, the baggage from, you know, games industries. You know, this baggage that I bring with me can is either obscuring my vision or it's helping me see clearly. Because it's... Mr. Creepypasta is every uh, editor every, you know, uh, writer in comics, every game idea man who posts on a forum or posts, you know, emails you to contact you and says, I have this great idea. And you're like, what's this great idea? And they're like, you know, well, my great idea is to produce something really good. Can you come up with that? (laughs) (laughs) And that's, you know, you know, come up with something really awesome. And you say like this and they go, that's really great, but perhaps a little more awesome. You know, and you're, like, working your ass off, and they're like, you know, thank you very much. Oh, by the way, you know, I, I no longer have the revenue to produce this. You know, it's like, I see I that think, so much the is the sketchy us, sort of... I'm sorry, go ahead. I think the other three of us are thinking it needs to be about um, 20% cooler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Just I, me? No, Just no, me. I okay. was, no. Well, maybe. Look it up. <laughs> look it up, no. kids. This is a fact. Look it up. Um, <laughs> don't look it up. It's a show for adults. <laughs> uh, for adult men. But the thing is, you know, that exactly... I, I don't know the exact reference, but I get the themes of it. Um, you know, that's the thing. You know, I've worked... I did, you know, I was a s- screenwriter, quote-unquote, for a period of time. And, you know, worked under somebody who wanted to produce his own movie, told me to write a horror script. You know, I wrote day and night. I wrote, you know, through from dusk till dawn, literally. And, you, you know, handed in the till script. Dawn? I'm sorry? You wrote from dusk till dawn? Ah, oh, <laughs> god damn it. 
But I wrote all through the Use night. Use the plagiarist now. Ah, damn it. But, you know, uh, the thing is, you know, I wrote this shit for this guy, you know, based on his specifications of what he wanted, and what I got back was, it's too scary, can you make it less scary? What the fuck? For a horror movie. Uh, you know, this is the type of, you know, I look at Mr. Creepypasta, and I see the face, or lack of face, we'll have to have that debate later, of all the different people I've seen in every other form of media who have this really great idea and the idea is to be successful and that's the idea entirely you know so, you can you confront the person by saying you know uh stories actually belong to people they're not all public domain and their answer is what no of course they're public domain they're posted on the internet yeah. you know you confront somebody about saying uh you know that you really shouldn't trademark this word and they're like, you know, what? Are you crazy? You know, we're the heroes in this, you know. It's that same, <laughs> you know, just whatever has to be said in the moment. Because, you know, you just got to keep looking at that prize, that bottom line. You know, keep your... You know, you're either the lead dog or the view never changes. You know, that kind of mentality. <laughs> you know, I I really like um, uh, Pin Pals by 1000 Vultures. If I found out that he trademarked Creepypasta, I would still like... Pen pals, right? But I would think that one thousand vultures is, is up to some shit, and I'd probably be <laughs> would be a vulture. <laughs> yes, yeah, literally one thousand vultures. Yeah, I would probably be uh, even more hard on him because I like him as an author. Mm -hmm. I think we're being nice with this guy because we don't really know him that well. Right. Yeah, that's you the know? thing, and that's it's the it's the it's the the blinders or lack thereof effect in some ways too, because we only again have so much information because we're we are not terribly familiar with all of Vincent's stuff and I understand a lot of people really like his work and you know that's great but it's a thing where you shouldn't let the work of an author you know blind you to some of the author's actions especially if they're a little a little a little weird you know so you we're know, just calling I, that into question I you know, would be very here's, oh, here's a wait here's a really good concrete example on the flip side of that I really like Ben Drowned you shouldn't have done that whatever you want to call that I really Haunted. love that Majora's yeah, the mask. haunted Majora's Mask thing. Yeah. The guy who made it made the sketchiest fucking Kickstarter in the world. <laughs> and at the time, I was super fucking critical of him. A bunch of people were. That doesn't mean we don't like the story. No, we're just the guy. pointing out, yeah. oh my God, you're saying you're going to make this movie. It's like five years later now. <laughs> Where's this movie that people gave you a, a shit ton of cash for? And you said it was called it was. Tropes versus Creepypasta? Yes. Oh, okay. Precisely. Um, yeah, but, the th I mean, I would be very interested to know what the relation... And this is, you know, just speculation, and, you know, I'm not alleging anything. I would be very interested to know what the relation is between uh, Vincent and Mr. Creepypasta. Because mm. I, I've seen, Oral. you know, I've seen a lot of stuff. Again, you know, the baggage that I bring with me of, you know, the... Possibly an with actual who? blood relation of people who, you know, work very closely together and promote each other, you know, and I just would wonder exactly how much MCP is involved in everything that, you know, is going on with that. I don't know. Well, I mean, to dig up uh, something that's actually happened to you that is more <laughs> in recent memory, look at the whole fucking nonsense with the, the purity sins thing and right, Five right. Nights at Treasure Island, where some really easy digging found out that the so-called legal counsel of this project was uh, someone related to one of the like project right. heads. Or something Her like mother, that. yeah. Th there, yeah, there for a mother second, or I was, or something. There for a second, I was like, "No, you're thinking of Mr. Creepypasta," and then I realized, "Oh wait, no, that happened twice." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, you know, with Mr. Creepypasta bringing in his girlfriend as legal counsel and not telling me she was his girlfriend, you know, saying this is my legal counsel. And me thinking I'm talking to a lawyer and then reading the responses and saying, oh, I'm not talking to a lawyer. Um, that is, you know, indicative of this whole thing of, you know, I, I want to say like nepotist, nepotistic type behavior, but... we could, How about we go with cronyism? Cronyism, okay. Because, you know, I don't know how much, you know, people actually know about this, but I know that Creeps McPasta 
um, ha- you know, ran a is funding British, thing. and that's the I worst thing. I saw that whole debacle the other day. Oh, I really? I watched that video, and then I saw the comments. And goddamn, DP, did you fly in like a like an Avenger? <laughs> I don't like, even. What? I, I know that. Whole I'm debacle. not sure what uh, video we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, the, could you uh, enlighten me, Nick? What happened? Creeps with pasta. Um, <laughs> You're on the spot video. again. Yep. As some of you may know, Slime Beast is the author of Abandoned by Disney. Oh, oh, okay. Which is a hugely popular creepypasta. And everybody's covered it. Uh, Creeps McPasta has covered it. And because Slime Beast is the author of this work, he doesn't mind, uh, from what I understand, Slime Beast, (laughs) if narrators actually narrate his work so long as they do not unfairly and without permission make money off of it by monetizing the video. Right. And revenue, you know best revenue. what happened from there, Slime Beast. I saw the video, but it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's weird for me to describe it from here. <laughs> Can you believe I actually was talking about something else with uh, Creeps McPasta? A, an entirely different sketch. Sketch no. wow. um, I, I I'll just quickly that. say that uh, basically Creeps McPasta, you know, in terms of myself, Creeps McPasta agreed to host uh, Mr. Creepypasta's videos of my work in an unmonetized format. And basically, they kept every time I checked again, they were monetized yet again. So I, you know, emailed him a few times about it, and eventually he just stopped replying, and they were just up and monetized. So I, you know, after like a year or two, finally said, you know, fuck it, and I made a video saying what happened, and, you know, immediately they were taken down. So, I mean, that's, you know, to all the people who say, why don't you contact people in private, that's, you know, what happens. But, um, what I was saying with, uh, Creeps McPasta is that. He supposedly, and this is information I've gotten from someone in the know about the situation, so take it with a grain of salt or whatever, but um, he apparently has his brother uh, working on a lot of things for him, including uh, a crowdfunding campaign to get, you know, to hire an official musician for his works, who happens to be his brother. (laughs) You know, it, it just it comes down to that right. thing of cronyism, like we were saying. So I would be very interested because when you watch uh, the explanation of the trademark, the it, it seems like uh, Vincent is in a call with somebody who maybe, you know, is prompting him about, you know, the different talking points. The reason I say this is because, you know, when you see somebody recording and they're not looking into the camera and they're looking at the screen, you know, it seems like they're looking at a, you know, window that they're reading, but that could be your own notes or it could just be someone who's not used to being on camera. That's kind of irrelevant, but that's just, you know. And the thing that really drives it home to me, though, is at the end of the video, when it's all said and done, he says, all right, so I'm going to hang up now. (laughs) And I'm like, oh, you're hanging up the call <laughs> on Skype with the person who's recording, you know, your video. You know, who's recording the view of you. Probably, you know, webcam screen share or whatever. You know, and then, you know, put together the video and uploaded it for you. Ten to one, that would be either, you know, MCP himself or someone associated with, you know, MCP in that group. You know, it's just that, it's that thing of, you know, there's all this crazy stuff that it's just obvious if you just look, you know, Mm -hmm. just a little bit, you know, I'll, I'm going to hang up now and it all becomes clear, (laughs) you know, like, oh, (laughs) you're talking on a, you know, call with somebody and what reason would you have to be in a call with somebody unless, you know, there's two or more people getting together, you know, to put something together, you know, and, you know, a damage control video or whatever the hell it would be, you know. So can you understand now, everyone, why we are a little bit, like, weirded out by all this? Some of us more than a little bit weirded out by all of this. And to be to be clear, this doesn't affect me in any way. No. Because, as I said, I'm not publishing any books. I have no plan to. So I'm I mean, not actually affected by any of this. I just, it's... you know, looked into it, found it, and told people, because I figure if anybody ever gets a notice in the future that they violated a trademark. I wanted people to have the uh, information beforehand 
saying, you know, this is who it's coming from. If you see a name you don't recognize, it actually is this person. It's it's just it's really I mean, it's more of the uh, the principle of the thing right. to me. Like I much like you, I don't have any plans to publish anything at any point under the name Creepypasta. But to, again, it's just the principle of the thing to me because again, this is a genre that I care about. It's a genre you certainly care about. Dead Palette cares about, and I mean, Nightmind Nick over there, you care about it too. I'm sure you do. I know you do. No, yeah, I don't. Senpai. Oh, Nick, senpai. what did you say that? Kohai. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, but we, no, I'm sorry. I, I don't know why I went that way. No, I mean, everybody, I mean, everybody in this call has, has some connection as, as artists, as, as creatives, as people who are really, and, and to a degree of people who at various points, I think all of us have, have been really, uh, have been really um, on point about saying, look, here's another piece of work that someone else did that we really enjoy. I'm, Midnight Marinera's whole thing is to be like, I found this piece and I really loved it and I wanted to adapt it. Uh, not only to give it my site. own kind of, Huh? Really? Found this site. It's really great. Normal <laughs> porn for normal people. <laughs> <laughs> Share for it for of, the good of humanity. Uh, for the good of humanity. Oh yeah, that's what... I mean, that's what I do. I share it for the good of humanity. But I always make... I mean, I make an effort to be like, this is... I mean, I adapted this, but here's the original writer. Here's the original story. This is where you can find them. Uh, I mean, Nightmind's all whole thing is about delving into the 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 fun, intriguing, and just uh, intense details of these usually sometimes fairly hard to access, um, especially for latecomers. Uh, these amazing ARG projects, and you are have always and, and Nick, you have always been really humble about like. This look, I couldn't do this without these guys. If really, you should go look at them yourselves. Don't just take my word for it. Go look at them yourselves. Oh yeah, uh, no, I, I will. I will annoy my own viewers to to go and look at their channel and subscribe if they want more. Because whatever I'm covering, I'm covering as an act of exposure, mm -hmm. and, and I want them to go back and take a look at this. And if they love it, support it. See where this came from. The, I, I'm just giving you a sample here. Right. I've exactly. actually seen you at the beginning of videos say, <laughs> there's spoilers in this video. Don't ruin it for yourself. Stop this video now and go actually watch all of the videos in the series before you watch mine. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> as opposed to just saying, hey, everybody, let's get into my theory. Blah, 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 blah. Here's everything that happens, you know. And if you didn't see it yet, oh well, spoiled. <laughs> because and, uh, you want actually, you want people to actually enjoy it and actually experience it. Right. Yeah. Right. Because I, I don't want the creators to to get burned. You know, anything that I cover is because I found this awesome thing. I want you guys to see this awesome thing. Let's talk about why this awesome thing is awesome and what comes of it and whatever else we think about with it. And now go to their place or their site or their channel and subscribe or follow or just check them out. Support this new creation. That's that's so, the bottom line is Nightmind is a horror channel dedicated to the growth of horror as an entire genre in whatever medium or media it takes. Support creators creating yeah. creative creations. Hmm. Basically, and, <laughs> and 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 not to you know to leave anybody out here. I mean, uh, Dead Palette has done his um, his his collections where he he will. Um, I mean, you'll you'll go and you'll do your own takes on certain shorter stories, usually all packed together with kind of an overarching kind of sub theme to them. And at the end, you're always very careful about saying these stories are by these people. You give it your own spin. You give it your own artistic like you know touch. But ultimately, you're still sharing the works of other people that you respect. And you make sure to acknowledge that here's, here are the people who wrote these things. So, uh, I mean, we all do that. We all care. Mm. And it's readily evident. I mean, if this, all this conversation before this, anyway, it's not like I'm trying to like, beat a dead horse or anything. Maybe I am. But at this point, you know, we all, we're all, we care a lot. <laughs> if you can look at the comments that Dead Palette and I actively engage in. Regardless of how acidic our tone may be, we are engaging in the conversation with people who are being incredibly acidic toward us. Mm -hmm. 
we wouldn't do that in any regard if we didn't care about anything. Mm -hmm. We would just be like, you know, oh, here's a you know comment saying that something I said wasn't true. Who gives a shit, you know? <laughs> on to on to my next you know money making opportunity or whatever. <laughs> you know who gives a shit what this asshole thinks? He's an idiot. Nobody. You know, the fact that we actually engage people and you know will argue the shit out of people. You know, will harangue them. You know, shows that we do care about what we're talking about. You know, it's, I, you know, by defending this stuff, I really don't have much to gain here. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to really gain, uh, you know, viewership or or get what I want out of life, which is people to <laughs> view my art through doing this. Right. People well, aren't going to be like, oh, this person is disagreeing with me. I better go check out their artistic endeavors. Right. <laughs> They just say, I better file that name away, and if I ever have the opportunity, I'll screw them over. So. <laughs> the, the, there have been some some funny, um, really, really mad comments that, I, that I've seen that are just over like the most inane stuff. It's just like, okay, well, this person's clearly full of shit. And then like the response back is like a, a eight-paragraph thesis on how I don't have any friends. It's like, whoa, <laughs> projection. <laughs> Right, right. Instead of addressing the topic at hand, they just they get defensive and suddenly go, "I fuck you." Well, I guarantee that this video is going to have several comments posting how long the video is. Yeah, yeah. as right. if that's a point. So, well, uh -huh. it, you guys sat because... there and talked for that amount of time. How this pathetic! Is, this is what we fucking do <laughs> normally. <left> comments. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, Only there's, there's sort of maybe like a last cap on the trademark tension. thing. Oh, I'm sorry, get. <laughs> this is how we normally talk, just with more sexual tension. True. Yeah. <laughs> but um, just you know, on the trademark thing, sort of maybe as like a final comment on that. I don't know, you know, if anybody else had anything to say, but you know, when you are releasing a series of Goosebumps style books and a series of comic books titled Creepy Pasta. You know, that type of thing is optioned by companies all the time. Five Nights at Freddy's getting a movie. I mean, you know, you look at Disney with its Marvel movies and you look at all the independent comics that have become movies. You know, from mm -hmm. Men in Black to Road to Perdition to all these different things. You know, it kind of is a bit much to ask for us to believe that if a big-time studio wanted to pick up the rights to Creepypasta, the comic book, to adapt it into film, television, whatever, it's a lot to ask for us to believe that they would not even consider selling the rights to a uh, company that was offering them enough money for the rights to produce what they have. You know, it's, it's way too much to ask us, you know, that we believe Disney could come to Vincent V. Cava Disney, mind you, and say, <laughs> you know, we want Creepypasta, the comic book. You know, here is our several million dollar offer for all rights entirely to your comic, including the trademark to the title. You know, that would be sold in a heartbeat, let's be honest. I would sell that in a heartbeat, you know, because I have, you know, very... <laughs> I have very important things that if I had the money to take care of them, you know, my life would be a lot better. Right. So, you know, to say that, you know, somebody would reject that offer because they trademarked it to protect the term for everybody, you know, just beggars belief, at mm -hmm. least in my opinion. I don't know. Maybe no, I'm, I'm with you that. there. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. Because the thing, the thing is, like, I, I just, it, if, if, if he had been straight up about it from the get-go if he had bought the rights and then immediately said here's why i bought them and here's what i'm doing with them i would have been like oh okay sure it's a little weird but all right but it's the 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 finger of suspicion is firmly pointed though because it's been quiet for so long right and it's only now now that it's become more public knowledge and again in the face of what happened to the fine bros and that whole thing about the the react thing that um that he's trying to explain himself 
that that's where that's where the suspicion comes in. Mm. That's where you would. That's why I'm you know with you on that in my mind. That's I mean it, it, I'm definitely it's 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 a possibility that can definitely be uh, entertained for sure. And, and you, if you, you're also dealing with right now, um, there's a controversy over Slenderman potentially being in American Horror Show or whatever. Uh, oh no! Oh jeez, really? Denied. Rumored denied. <laughs> Uh, rumor denied rumor came up and then was denied by the actual official FX uh, Thank like two days later. Goodness. But, that, that, but that's the thing, though, is when that happened, there were a bunch of people who said, oh, that's great, who are morons. And then there were a <laughs> bunch of people who were just like, oh, man, you're just cheapening this guy on every front. Right. That was my thought. I mean, just, this whore character means nothing anymore if it's, you know, being pasted in here. My, I mean, the the thing with the, the thing with American Horror Story that jumped to my mind was that American Horror Story is very much like it. You look it up, and it, it is often sl slotted under erotic thriller. Hmm. And I think to myself, oh God, <laughs> Slender Man in that. <laughs> no, no. His thin, prehensile white penis, but yeah. <laughs> Those tentacles, man. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if anybody out there can envision any point. Where the trademark to creepypasta could be sold to a company, under any circumstances, if your imagination can come up with any scenario, then what's the difference? Because it still ends up in a corporation's hands. And we don't want that. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you can imagine Vincent selling the trademark for $20 million, let's make an incredibly crazy amount. You know, if you can imagine that, yeah, he probably would do that. What's the difference then between that and the company having trademarked it in the first place? I'd see him doing it for two thousand. <laughs> uh, I don't know this guy. Why? Why should I trust him? And why true. should well, you trust him? N not you guys. I mean, anyone listening. Why? Right. Why would you trust? Like, I just don't have that trust. Maybe Mr. I'm Creepypasta just more skeptical. wouldn't be close friends with someone who is dishonest. That's why. <laughs> mm. I mean, that literally is probably why. <laughs> because he writes good stories and he knows Mr. Creepypasta. That is the entire... <laughs> that is the entire list of what you could say about why you would trust somebody. You know, that's the entire list of what oh, we know about this person, so... Oh, boy. Anyway. I don't know. I, I feel like we kind of are winding down. I don't know. It yeah. seems that way. Yeah. We kind of charted it from the beginning, and then we really got hung up on the... Right. Because I, I just, we were sitting there, and I could just I just looked over, and there it was, just standing there, waiting, waiting to be called on. The pasta shade? No, the yellow... Oh, oh. yeah, hold on. Hold on. Okay, no, keep, keep talking. I still okay. need to go... Well, I was going to say, we, we didn't really even get into part of what I was going to talk about, which was uh, the culture of the offended taking an interest in creepypasta and the sort of the, the sort of whether or not we are part of the problem or whether we are against the problem of hipster culture in creepypasta as per you know I liked this before it was cool we know what creepypasta was before it got onto YouTube <laughs> oh boy here we go yeah, it, it, it comes up a lot. I mean, trust me, I'm an old soul, and I know a thing or two about the creepypasta. I knew about the creepypasta before creepypasta was a thing, hmm. you know? And seriously, I mean, you could say I'm a creepypasta hipster, but you have to understand, I am a being that is composed entirely of creepypasta as an idea. So the moment that came out, so did I. And then it just got bigger and bigger, and I decided, well, what am I supposed to do about it? You, know? you you heard it here first, people. The pasta shade has been out for years, confirmed. Mm. And apparently yes. is also now the property of Vincent V. Cava. Oh, no. no, <laughs> no comprised no, entirely no. of creepypasta. Can't Denied take it back. pasta shade. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so we really need to do something about this, you guys. Really, because I can't, I don't have, oh, I don't have the money to do with the licensing fees, I tell you. I don't deal with mortal currency. Hmm. It's not, I mean, sure, David does, but I don't. And well, he's not going to cover my ass. Oh, man. I feel like we so didn't we get it. to address the point. I feel like we didn't address the point, though, about the hipster thing. Well, I, I mean, we, we could always save that for the next. Yeah. Welcome, committee. Yeah, welcome, committee. YouTube douchebag. <laughs>